Soft and frightening, twisted and pierced, hollow in me. No, I am not of this world. I know you had your doubt. And the wind she moans, wearing down this heart made of stone. Be enough for now. My mind. 
She doesn't know if they might take her life. And so this song is the story of what happens with Anne Hart. And by the way, she was six feet tall, flaming red hair, one cross eye. When she uh, was a spy in the, um, in the revolution, she dressed as a man. She was a pretty amazing woman. So I thought that was fitting for women's night. Right, right? badass woman. All right, it's called Wahatchee. <laughs>
gosh. So I come from a long line of storytellers, and um, a lot of the, well, few of the songs I'm going to do for you guys are, are true stories. That is a true story. And um, we're reported to be related to Anne Hart. Um, this next one, though, I think we're going to um, uh, step off of the, the family story um, track and do a song that I want to dedicate to Val. Um, this is one that I know, well, she really was a force in helping the song come together. I walked the Community Santiago pilgrimage about five years ago, and Jim and I had begun thinking about how to capture what that experience is like. And it was only when Val said, you know, was asking for advice before she left, and, and it kind of gelled at that moment, thinking about her starting that journey and how powerful it was for me. And I thought the only real piece of advice wasn't about packing and travel and logistics. It was just simply be open to meeting yourself on the Camino. And, and so um, while we were in Nova Scotia visiting with her, we wrote the song. And it just one of those that came together after five years, came together in about 30 minutes. Um, and uh, it's called Finister.
is a, like I said, I come from a long line of storytellers and many gifted ones. And I've been so blessed and fortunate because um, great grandparents' stories have come down to me as if they happened just yesterday. And so this next um, number, yeah, closer, this next number is um, called, help me guys, the Mount Horeb Associate, Associate Reformed Presbyterian, Presbyterian Church. Church. Can you guys say that with me? The Mount Horeb Associate, Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church. Church. Okay, because I'm going to say it a few times. This is the theme of these stories over many, many generations. And um, so, and much of the, all of these stories are true. <laughs> all right. sun was the size of a silver dollar and there weren't no moon yet. There was a little place called the Mount Horeb Church. Now that was quite a church and a gathering place for the whole community. And the full name of it was the Mount Horeb Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church. And it was located kind of head kind of south from where we lived, you know, on the Brooklyn Road, past Uncle Watt Moore's place and up that long hill on a flat just past Cousin Ida's and Cousin Hampton Whitley's. Right at the top of that hill, you know Jim, was that off kind of to the right of the road. And it was a high church for a country church. The preachers knew they were talking to people with some schooling. They could read their own Bibles. There were school teachers like Mama was. First preacher I remember was a Mr. Presley. Elderly gentleman, traveled around with his horse and buggy most of the time. But his clothes was always pretty raggedy. Not very well kept. Well, because he gave them away. If somebody saw somebody who needed something, he'd give it to them. At the Mount Horeb Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church. It was a high church for a country church. It was mamas and papas and horse buggies and preachers. It was a high church for a country church. Jesus walking on water and Moses listening to a fiery talking bush. Now, Mount Horeb is the same thing as Mount Sinai. Was a high church for a country church. Now, Jim, that reminds me of the time, that next preacher I remember. He was a Mr. Hayes. His wife's name was Aurelia. Oldest child, Jesse. Then Charlotte, Charles, and Samuel. A lot of Sundays, they would eat at our house. Of course, we didn't have services every Sunday, but just a couple of times a month. But I remember, we still went to Sunday school on Sunday mornings. Next was a Mr. Quinn, then a Mr. Latham followed. I don't remember too much about him. Next up, uh, oh, but those Quinns, they had two or three daughters. Now, he warned them about my brothers, Carol and Bill. They was all about the same age. That's about the time Daddy told those boys to enlist. And they did. They joined the Navy and they served through World War II. They made it out all right. I mentioned Cousin Ida and Cousin Hampton Whitley, I think, right? They live close to the church? Okay. Well, Cousin Ida had two dogs. They look a lot like basset hounds, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah, short, kind of built low to the ground, big old legs and big old ears. They come to church with Cousin Ida and sit on the pew. When they got restless, she gave them chewing gum to chew. Now, of course, all us little youngins love to sit around and watch the dogs because they entertained us a lot more than the service did. That's all true because it happened at the Mount Horeb Associate Reform Presbyterian Church. It was a high church for country church. All kinds of strange and miraculous things could be found. It was a high church for country church. Moses parting the Red Sea with his big walking stick. More it was preachers a high church for country church. And pretty preacher daughters and gum chewing hounds. Well, Jim, but yes. don't let me forget, inside that church, I gotta tell you, there was homemade pews. And of course, the pulpit was homemade. And if you were looking in the door off to the right, up toward the front, it had a wood stove. You know, the chimney went out up the top and let out, yeah, they let out the heat. And all along the walls for years, we just had kerosene lamps in there. We was uptown when we got us an Aladdin lamp. An Aladdin lamp had a wick thing in it. I forget what they call it. A wick reflector, but it gave off about four times more light than just the regular kerosene. 
One time during a revival, kind of the fall of the year, and they cranked up that wood stove to heat the place up, and a country church has a way of getting cold. And he heated up in there, and those wasps would get to coming out of the overhead, flying around, buzzing around. And even one time there, Mr. Quinn, preaching like that, had his mouth open. One of them wasps flew right into his mouth and stung him on the tongue. They had to carry him to Andalusia to the doctor because his mouth and tongue swelled up so bad. That's true. It happened at the Mount Horeb Associate Reform Presbyterian Church. It was a high church for a country church. There was the flood and there was Noah collecting animals of all kinds. It was a high church for a country church. And the church was sort of a miniature version of this. It was a high church for a country church. And there was cousins and aunts and uncles and hounds and bugs of all kinds. It was kind. a high church for a country church. Oh, but Jim, that reminds me of the time. I think I mentioned those old dogs of Cousin Ida's. Well, one time, one of them dogs decided he'd get down in the aisle there and ride his tricycle. Well, he rode his butt right over one of them wasps, and he let a howl and broke up the service, and he didn't wait for somebody to open the front door. He knocked it open as he went out, and the other dog took off after him. Of course, something like that would tickle a young'un's mind, something so funny. But children wasn't the only one that laughed at that. I think it was Mr. Quinn was doing the preaching. He had to laugh about it, too. Well, I'll go on about the dogs. Dogs did do what dogs do sometimes. They'd be laying there and a-sleeping, and one of them pass a little gas, and the other would whimper and get up and move. Of course, that tickled everybody right around there. Cousin Ida would reach over and hit him with one of them funeral home fans laying there over the pews. And everybody around there would be a flap in those funeral homes pretty fast. I do remember, though, how those country preacher, pre preachers told their sermons with a Scottish burr. They were regular folks. They hadn't been much further than the small towns around there, but they had a real burr. They had learned from the Scots who left Scotland and started the church and just passed it on with that accent. At the Mount Horeb Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church. It was a high church for a country church. People rising from the dead, speaking in tongues. It was a high church for a country church. But was that a wasp thing? Or was that a Scottish burr? It was a high church for a country church. People flapping their funeral home fans from the heat and odiferous dogs. Jim, that does remind me one more thing. Then there was Daddy's Daddy. He became a sort of a preacher after the Civil War. He walked home from it, and it started talking against the war. He traveled all over the countryside debating and preaching. At that time, there were lots of people wandering the roads and looking for food and shelter. Grandpa Cumbie would take the food right off of the table, out from under his children, to feed somebody who was at the door. Well, of course, Daddy didn't like that much. He was a boy, and he was hungry, too. But then, during the Depression, the hobos were there. Daddy was always trying to find work for them. You know, somebody who showed up at the farm, and, and they'd do some work for the day, and then join the family for dinner. They'd move on after that. But there was that one time Daddy took a shovel and whacked Aunt Mary's husband across the head. He said a cuss word to Aunt Mary on the way to church, and Aunt Mary always was Mama's favorite. Well, that old church is long gone. My, cu my first cousin bought it, and his mama lived there for a while. I always thought that was kind of neat. Now some of the old beliefs, I just don't see eye to eye with them. We started out the Robinsons with John Robinson. He was the pastor to the Pilgrims, and he was a Congregationalist. I don't know how we got to be Presbyterians, and some of us Baptists, and some Methodists, and so on. But through some good times and hard times, our family worshiped together, we ate dinner together, and we tried to help each other out. And we still do. Now some of our grandkids say they don't believe in God. They're atheists. But I don't suppose it matters. They're good people. Try to love each other and help each other out. At the Mount Horeb Associate Reform Presbyterian Church. 
It was a high church for a country church. There were hobos and pacifists and veterans and war preachers. It was a high church for a country church. Folks were devout in their own way, even the atheists. It was a high church for a country church. They studied and read and listened and argued and disagreed. It was a high church for a country church. But they still came together. Now that's a miracle these it was days. A high church for country church at the Mount Horeb Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church and all the mothers. I thought the songs for a long time and this is the first time I've actually we did a whole songwriting week last week where we kind of got thrown into a room with a random stranger, you know, from like Sweden or from Germany or Senegal, and, and they're just like, go, write a song in three hours. And uh, <laughs> it was really cool, you know, it was really cool to just kind of not, you know, you don't know anything about each other, about each other's styles, and to be able to create something together in a few hours would be neat. Yeah. There we go. You guys sing along with me, is that cool? Alright. We're doing a song called Firewire. That we do, uh, depending on the, depending on the, uh, band iteration, it, it's completely different depending on if you see it with the full band or if it's on the record. <laughs> um, and this is my fun kind of solo live version.
Now for something completely different. This is a song called Miles de Mias. Um, I, my last record is kind of an exploration of my Latin roots. I'm half Mexican. Uh, went to Argentina, was fascinated by some rhythms on there called Chacarrera and cool instruments. And then I went to El Salvador and spent eight months doing mission work there with my fiance. We started a college scholarship fund, and then, anyway, I feel like I, I went to South America, and I'm kind of working my way up, and uh, so this is, a, this is a cumbia, so getting a little more in touch with uh, roots that are closer to Texas. <laughs> um, but you're going to need to imagine the, uh, the cumbia beat, because it's a little hard to do just with my guitar, so you're going to be like, so that's, that's you got to go in your head, okay? <laughs> Get your hips going. All right. <laughs> so this is a this is a song about long distance love and how much it sucks. I need to know we are close.
student, and he is, uh, he is one of the ones I was thrown into a room with, and we were, we were forced to write music under duress. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> and um, anyway, and then I ended up, yeah, you should just get shorter. Yeah, that's uh, probably easier. Than <laughs> I'm raising the mic. I think every time we've done this switch, I feel, I feel like backwards. Ah, um. uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so this is a song, um, this was the day, I can't remember exactly what day it was, I think it was the day after the whole, like, she persisted, um, you know. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you should Google hashtag she persisted. But, um, yeah, like, th that Tuesday, I felt like the world started crumbling with all the things that were happening politically. Anyway, and so I had this little, I came home and I was just kind of feeling like, oh my God, like how do we stay on top of all this stuff? I feel crazy. Um, how do we keep our democracy from failing? And uh, <laughs> anyway, so I, I just came home with this like little riff and I was feeling like, yeah. And so I, I brought it to Jens and um, he helped me flush it out and I made him write a political, American political song. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, can you just remind me of the, Start of the chorus. Yes, yeah, so we'll we kept we changed the chorus like five times, so we're gonna mess it up. It's just gonna happen. Uh, okay, so we're doing. They told her twice. Yeah. They told her, and then the second one is to tell us. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They told her to sit down. Right? Sit down. Yeah. yeah I'm, I hate messing it up. Yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you miss me up, kids. Okay. All right.
Um, and this was kind of my, my, my tribute to El Salvador and the people of El Salvador, um, who live some really tough circumstances. Tough is a, <laughs> a really lame word. Uh, they, yeah, it's, it's, some of the stuff they're living, it's, it's just inhumane. Um, but uh, the, the hearts of those people are, I've never met a humbler, more gracious um, uh, people in my life. And we lived there for eight months, and it was really hard to just like leave and be like, okay, peace out, we're going back to the first world. <laughs> and uh, so my fiance and I started a college scholarship fund for girls in El Salvador. It's called Nina Sarriva, and we've been putting four young women through college. We actually just had two graduate this year. So if you want to find out more about that, it's cool. Um, but anyway, so this is our, our fun, like, uh, El Salvadoran tribute. And I'm going to have you guys scream, sube, which means get up on the bus. So when you get on the bus in El Salvador, they're like, sube, 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 vamos al centro. Like, they're like, hey, get on the bus. It's really cool. We're going to go to the centro and the mercado and, like, all these places. And, like, it's where you want to go. You know, they try to convince you. Um, so I'm going to say, uh, well, here we go.
Hey everybody, thanks again for coming to the House of Songs room. Uh, we, we're showcasing badass women tonight. Um, yeah! 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 Y
consider my songs like special little precious rare birds that sort of are birthed from the moon and the skies and then they're sort of in my hands and then they fly away into the world. And, um, and it was an interesting experience for me because this wasn't a precious process. It was a process of working. Um, and so I'm going to play you, uh, in this session, I'm going to play you two songs that were written during the House of Songs. Um, do you feel like coming up and playing that tune now? Yeah. Yeah, all right, let's do it. Uh, please welcome Kaylin Faye. Thank you. 
sat there in silence till the morning light did shine. Till the morning light did shine. He wasn't here by choice Though he said he was free Without ambition I could see through his points Time finally came With old Middle Gate Station. So I found that kid, told him, Don't be afraid to go back home to what you're missing. He stared me straight in the eyes, asked me for a song. It was the memories that he did long So I gave him some Sang him Johnny Cash, sang him Patsy Cline. He just sat there in silence till the morning light did shine. Till the morning light did shine. I do have an Oklahoma room album though here. Anyway, this song is called Bible Belt. It's the title track of the album, Bible Belt. <laughs> Yeah. 